Hey guys, a very good day to you all. In this video, we are going to understand the colligative properties of electrolytes and we will also see what is van der Hoff factors. Now, in the previous videos, we have already seen the colligative properties for non-electrolytes. Now, first of all, what are colligative properties? Colligative properties are the properties which depend on number of solute particles. It only depends on the amount of solute and it does not depend on its nature. Okay. And we have already seen the colligative properties for non-electrolytes such as vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression and osmotic pressure. Now, if you have not seen my previous video, then the link is given in the description box below or you can simply click on this I button which is present on the right top corner of your screen. Now, when we studied all these properties, the solute that we had considered was non-electrolyte. Okay, But this time when we are going to study the pro these properties, we are going to consider the solute which is electrolyte. Okay, so the solute this time is going to be electrolyte. Now, what is the difference if we add a non-electrolyte solute and an electrolyte solute? Let's understand that. So, when we add a non-electrolyte solute, so if we add a 1 mole of sucrose which is non-electrolyte solute, then what is going to happen is that this 1 mole of sucrose is going to remain 1 mole of sucrose as it is in the solution. But if we add a electrolytic solu solute, let's say we add NaCl. So when we add one mole of NaCl, this one mole of NaCl is going to get decomposed into one mole of Na plus and one mole of Cl minus. So total number of moles of solute will now be equals to two moles. Okay. So initially you added one mole of solute that is nothing but NaCl. But this one mole of solute turned into two moles of solute. Now you might be wondering that this one mole is of Na plus and this one mole is of Cl minus. So how can we count them together as two moles? See, as mentioned earlier, colligative properties only depend on the number of solute. It does not matter if it is a Na plus, whether it is a Cl minus or even if it is a O2 minus. Uh, the only factor that you must consider is its amount. And here, in, when we add one mole, in return, we are adding two moles of solute. Okay. So this one mole is expanding and giving us two moles. The similar thing happens when we add Na2SO4, which is also a electrolytic solute. Okay, so when we add one mole of Na2SO4, we get two moles of Na plus and one mole of SO4 2 minus. So as you can see over here, initially we added only one mole of Na2SO4, but now the total number of moles of solute will be equals to three. This two plus one will give you three. So this is the difference between a non-electrolytic solute and the electrolytic solute. When you are adding the non-electrolytic solute, the number of moles will remain constant. But when we add an electrolytic solute, the number of moles will increase as you can see in these two examples. Now on the basis of this concept, a factor was uh, introduced that is known as the van der Hoff factor. And this van der Hoff factor is represented as I. And the simple formula for this I is nothing but number of moles of solute after dissociation divided by the number of moles of solute before dissociation. Okay. Now, how will you find out the value of this I? Let us understand with the help of an example. So, for example, let's say you have one mole of NaCl and you want to find out the value of I. So, we know that when NaCl decomposes, this one mole of NaCl decomposes, it will give us two moles. As you can see over here, when this one mole of NaCl decomposes, it gives us two moles okay therefore the value of i will be c in the numerator number of moles of solute after decomposition that is nothing but two and number of moles of solute before dissociation so initially we have considered only one mole so two upon one will give you two okay now for one mole of na2so4 
So we all know that when one mole of Na2SO4 dissociates, it gives us two moles of Na+, and one mole of SO4 to minus. So two plus one, three. Okay. So in the denominator, uh, in the numerator, we will going to we will have three, and in the denominator, we are going to have this one. So three upon one will be equals to three. So this is how you find out the value of Van t Hoff factor. Now, what is the use of this Van t Hoff factor? Okay, so let's understand the use of this Van t Hoff factor and why it is important with the help of this numerical. It is a very simple numerical. The only thing that you have to do is pay attention. Okay, so in the numerical, in numerical, numerical, my bad guys. In the numerical, it is given as 1.25 molal. Sucrose is added in solution. Okay, so here sucrose is the solute, and this sucrose is a non-electrolyte solute. Okay, so this non-electrolyte solute sucrose is added in the solution, and the concentration of the sucrose is one point two five molality, not molarity. It is molality. Clear with this. Now, and further on, the question says that the depression in freezing point was two point three two degree Celsius. Okay, so when you add one point two five molar sucrose in the solution, the depression in freezing point is two point three two degree Celsius. Now the question asks us to find out what will be the value of depression in freezing point for one point two five molar NaCl. And if you observe over here, this NaCl is a electrolytic solute, and this sucrose is a non-electrolytic solute. So although the concentration is same, both are present in 1.25 molal, but the depression in freezing point will be different because sucrose is a non-electrolytic solute, and NaCl is a electrolytic solute. Okay, so. Let us find out the answer for this. First of all, the first thing that you must do is analyze the question carefully. In the question, the concentration is given in terms of molality. Now, what is the meaning of molality? Molality tells us the number of moles present in one kg solution. So, can I say that since the molality of sucrose is 1.25 molal, therefore 1.25 moles of sucrose is present in 1 kg solution okay and here it is given that for 1.25 molal the depression in freezing point is 2.32 degree celsius okay so when you have 1.25 molal solute the depression in freezing point will be 2.32 degree celsius it is given in the question itself clear now further on We have to find out the depression in freezing point for NaCl. For NaCl, clear. We all know that NaCl, being the electrolytic solute, it is going to get decomposed. So we know that one mole of NaCl will decompose and give us one mole of Na plus and one mole of Cl minus. Similarly, can I say that when 1.25 moles of NaCl decomposes, it will give us 1.25 moles of Na plus and 1.25 moles of Cl minus. So can I say that 1.25 moles of NaCl will give us 2.5 moles of solute? How 2.5 moles of solute? See this 1.25 plus 1.25 becomes 2.5 moles of solute. Clear with this? So this is how. When you add 1.25 moles of NaCl, you will get 2.5 moles of solute. So now, can I say that in the solution, 2.5 moles of solute is present? Clear. Now, let us find out the concentration of this solute. Okay. So for concentration in terms of molality, the formula for molality is nothing but number of moles divided by the mass. So we all know that number of moles is 2.5, and the mass is 1 kg. How have you got to know it is 1 kg? Because as you can see over here, the concentration is in for NaCl is in terms of molal, molality, and in the molality, uh, 
molarity tells us the number of moles present in 1 kg. Therefore, 1.25 moles of NaCl is present in 1 kg. Okay, therefore, I have considered 1 kg over here. And now, the molarity for the solute will obviously be 2.5 divided by 1, which is equal to 2.5. Clear with this? Now, earlier, we know that for 1.25 molal, the depression in freezing point is 2.32 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let me write it over here. For 1.25 molal, the depression in freezing point is 2.32 degree Celsius. So, what will be the depression in freezing point for 2.5 molal? I do not know that. Therefore, I assume this to be Z. Okay, I have assumed the value to be Z. Now, how you can find out the value of Z? By simply cross multiplying. So, when you cross multiply this, you get find out the value of Z as 4.64 degree Celsius. Clear with this? So, can I say that finally, the depression in freezing point of 1.25 molal NaCl is 4.64 degree Celsius. Listen carefully guys. You might get a doubt in this statement. Listen carefully again. Depression in freezing point of 1.25 molal NaCl is 4.64 degree Celsius. Now you might be having a doubt that here I have written 2.5 molal. Then why am I saying 1.25 molal NaCl? Because as you can see over here, from this 1.25 moles of NaCl, you are getting 2.5 moles of solute. So you can either say 1.25 moles of NaCl or you can either say 2.5 moles of total solute present in 1 kg. Clear with this. Now, further on, this was a lengthy process to find out the depression in freezing point of NaCl, 1.25 molar NaCl, right? This can be simplified. How? Let's see. See, the depression in freezing point of NaCl will be equals to I, that is nothing but the vent of factor into depression in freezing point of sucrose. Let's see whether it is right or wrong. See, we all know for NaCl, the value of I is 2 and the depression in freezing point of sucrose is 2.32. Am I right? It is 2.32. It is already given. So, 2 into 2.32. Let me show you all. 2, 2 into 3.32 will also give you 4.64 degrees Celsius. So this is how you can easily find out in just two steps the depression in freezing point of NaCl. That is nothing but 4.64 degree Celsius. By just multiplying the depression in freezing point of sucrose with the value of I. Clear? Now here you must note one thing that the concentration must be same. Over here when you are multiplying with the value of I you must uh, note one thing that the concentration of sucrose is same 1.25 molal and the concentration of NaCl is also 1.25 molal. Only then you can multiply directly with the value of um, I and you can find out. Now my one question to you all. What if the concentration is not same? If the concentration is 5 molal, let's say in the question they ask you for 5 molal NaCl, then what will you do? See. Again, so what you will do is that you will use the formula for I. See, when you use the formula for this I, you will find out the value for 1.25 molal. And by the value of 1.25 molal, you have already found out. Now you can easily find out the value for 5 molar. Okay, clear with this. Now, uh, moving on, let me consider this formula that we have used over here. Okay. So from this formula, can I say that the value of a formula for I will be the depression in freezing point of NaCl divided by the depression in freezing point of sucrose. Okay. So let me write it over here. Now we all know that this NaCl is a electrolyte and this sucrose is a non-electrolyte. So can I say that the value of I will be nothing but depression in freezing point of electrolyte divided by the depression in freezing point of non-electrolyte. Clear with this. Similarly, 
here i have given an example of depression in freezing point the same concept you can also apply for other qualitative properties as well for example the value of i will also be equals to the depression in uh, sorry the elevation in boiling point of electrolyte divided by the elevation in boiling point of non electrolyte or the value of i can also be found out with the help of vapor pressure lowering of electrolyte divided by the vapor pressure lowering of non electrolyte or it can uh, also be used for another qualitative property that is nothing but osmotic pressure so the value of i will be equal to the osmotic pressure of electrolyte divided by the osmotic pressure of non electrolyte so this is how you can easily find out the value of vanth of factor and this vanth of factor value is going to be very crucial in finding out solving the new mcqs as well so guys if you like this video then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if uh, and go check out my channel where i uploaded physics and chemistry videos they might be helpful for you all and guys thank you for watching this video